Well, shalom, everyone. My name's Howard Silverman, and I'm the rabbi at Beth Messiah Congregation here in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, this video today is uh, designed to help us have a home Passover Seder. You know, usually at Beth Messiah, we have a large community Seder. Uh, but this year, uh, we're not doing that, and we're encouraging all of our families to have a Seder at home or to join together. Uh, and hopefully, this video and the materials that we have made available will help you to enjoy the celebration of Passover and that it will be a meaningful event for you. Now, where we want to begin is what we need to do to prepare for the Seder itself. We don't just sit down uh, and, and begin, right? So the first thing is, traditionally, uh, at Passover, we don't eat bread. We have unleavened bread. We eat matzah. And uh, this is uh, what matzah looks like. This is a traditional box of matzah that you can get at your uh, grocery store. Uh, and of course, uh, this, is what, this is what matzah looks like. Uh, and so before the Seder begins, we clean out uh, the bread from our homes. And for the week of Passover, beginning with the Passover Seder, uh, we eat unleavened bread or we eat matzah. Well, after we've cleaned out the bread from our home and we come to the day of Passover, uh, perhaps uh, you're going to have a, a special meal uh, at the Seder, like brisket or some f type of chicken. And some families, uh, especially it's a Middle Eastern tradition, actually have lamb uh, at the Passover Seder. And you'll be, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting your meal uh, prepared and cooking. Now, the table that you have your Seder at, your dining room table or your kitchen table, you need to have certain things on the table uh, at the beginning of the Seder. Of course, you want to have a Seder plate. Now, you don't have to have a fancy Seder plate like I have here in order to have uh, a Seder. You can take a large dinner plate, okay? Uh, and the purpose of the Seder plate is for foods that remind us of the bitterness of slavery and the sweetness of redemption. On the Seder plate, you're going to want to have, and I have a little picture here that is uh, very helpful. Uh, you're going to want to have uh, the bone of a lamb, the shank bone, hopefully, uh, of a lamb. You're going to want to have parsley. You'll want to have also a roasted or hard-boiled egg. Uh, you are going to uh, want to have a mixture of, of uh, chopped up apples and, and walnuts with some grape juice and, and honey uh, mixed in together. That's called charosis, and we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about that. Uh, and you're also going to want to have horseradish, ground horseradish, not horseradish sauce but ground horseradish and preferably red horseradish. If you have the white horseradish, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but traditionally, we use the red horseradish. And then finally, a piece of uh, lettuce, uh, romaine uh, lettuce is also a, uh, a, a tradition uh, for that. Now, uh, on your Seder plate, you're also going to want to have if possible, a bag for your three ceremonial pieces of matzah. But I know that a lot of people don't have a special matzah bag. Uh, and so what you can do is take another dinner plate and put three pieces of matzah, just like, just like this, on the plate. Uh, and uh, what some families do is you can separate them by big napkins, like three napkins in between. Uh, so that it kind of looks like the, the matzah bag. And that, that's fine. Okay, so you'll want to have three pieces of matzah stacked on a plate. Now, you'll be eating matzah in the meal uh, as a bread substitute, but these three pieces of matzah are uh, for ceremonial purposes. Okay? You're also going to want uh, everyone to have their, um, their, their plate, their um, place setting. They're going to, you know, they're the silverware and plate and cups and, and so on. 
Uh, and everyone will need a cup, a special cup for either wine or grape juice uh, that you'll use in the Seder. And then, like I have here, a ceremonial cup called Elijah's cup with wine or grape juice uh, in it. And uh, traditionally, we also light candles uh, at the Passover Seder. So you'll want a couple of candlesticks with candles and matches. And then when everyone sits down, uh, you're going to want to have an empty place at the, at the table, an empty place. This will be uh, for, uh, for Elijah, right? Now, everyone should have with them at their dinner, uh, at their place setting also, a booklet called the Passover Haggadah. The Passover Haggadah. And the Haggadah is the order of service. It's a booklet that goes step by step through all of the prayers and liturgy, telling the story of the outgoing of the Jewish people uh, from Egypt. Uh, and we go through the Passover Haggadah. This, this guides us uh, through uh, the whole event. Now, we've also prepared uh, for you actually two pieces. One is a downloadable Passover Haggadah and uh, another piece called the Essential Haggadah Helper, which basically just takes you step by step in explaining how to use the Haggadah and how to use the Seder. And frankly, just about everything that, that we're saying here today is found in the Essential Haggadah Helper and in the Passover uh, Haggadah. Now, as we uh, get ready to begin, the, the leader of the Seder uh, sits in his chair and uh, traditionally has a pillow on his chair and he leans on a pillow. And uh, the purpose of, uh, of the pillow is to denote freedom, that we've been freed from slavery in Egypt. And of course, the goal of the Passover Seder is for us to feel as if we were there back in Egypt, experiencing that redemption for ourselves. And as a Messianic Jewish community, we not only, we not only want to re-experience the outgoing uh, from the land of Egypt, but we also want to uh, be thankful for our own experience of redemption, for we know that Messiah is our Passover sacrificed for us. So when we celebrate Passover, we are remembering the God of redemption. We're remembering that he redeemed us out of Egypt, we remember that he redeemed us uh, through the, uh, the blood of Yeshua. Uh, and we celebrate that redemption, past, present, and indeed future. So it is a very dynamic celebration. Uh, it's a relaxed celebration. It, it's a celebration. And so uh, it is a time for family and friends to come together uh, to share the story of redemption, to have a lovely meal together, and to eat, again, foods that remind us of the bitterness of slavery and the sweetness of redemption. And hopefully at the end of the evening, uh, we uh, are full of food, full of joy, full of the Spirit of God, uh, and just motivated, you know, really in our walk with uh, the Messiah. Uh, and so as we begin the Seder, we take our Passover Haggadah. Now, the Haggadah that we use is called the Messianic Jewish Passover Haggadah, celebrating our redemption uh, that uh, is published by Messianic Literature uh, Outreach. And again, we have made this available to you uh, to download or to actually buy the Haggadah uh, itself, as well as the essential Haggadah helper. We certainly want everyone to be able to celebrate Passover. Now, as you open up the Haggadah, now, if you're, if you're totally new to a Jewish celebration and, and all of that, you're going to realize that it opens up the other way. The, the Haggadah opens up uh, moving from right to left. And that's because Hebrew reads that way, and that's how uh, traditional uh, Hebrew books uh, are written. Now, on page one, it says, Bidakat uh, achametz, uh, which means searching for leaven. So there's a tradition that just before you sit down to the table, you search the home for leavened bread. Now, when I was growing up, that would be something that I would do, that, that children would do, search the home for, for, for leaven. And when we're sure that all the leaven is gone, uh, we say the prayers on page one, uh, and we're ready for our Passover Seder. 
Now, not everyone does everything, every single part that's in the Haggadah, right? And so, I, you know, perhaps uh, searching for the leaven might not be uh, something that uh, you want to do. You're going to sit down to the uh, table. So then you can begin on page two with the lighting of the candles. Usually the lady of the house lights the candles, shedding light on the table of redemption, uh, remembering the presence of God in our midst and uh, remembering uh, that God is the one who redeemed us out of Egypt. And on page two, we have uh, the prayer for lighting the candles. The prayer goes like this. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu lehadlikner shel yom tov. Now we have in our Haggadah, those words are transliterated so that you can actually read them in English words and it's, it's the Hebrew words that you're pronouncing. Uh, and you can say them or sing them uh, if you'd like, and then they're translated into English underneath. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has made us holy in your commandments and has commanded us to kindle the festival lights. Now on page three of our Haggadah, we have uh, a quote from Exodus chapter six, verses two to eight, which is the promise of redemption. One of the things that we like to do at our Passover Seder is let everybody get involved. And so uh, you can go around the table uh, and people at your home can all participate in reading different, reading different parts. And this is all by way of introduction. And again, depending on uh, your situation at home, you might have a, a bunch of children and, and uh, you don't want to uh, take an extremely long time in, in your Seder, uh, you can just point to this, this, these verses to quote. Uh, or you can read them at your Seder. When we come to page four, we actually really come to the beginning of the Seder. The Passover Seder be can be gauged by four cups uh, that we drink. The first cup is called Kiddush, or the cup of sanctification. It reminds us that the Seder is a separated time, that Passover is a holy time and that our meal together is really a spiritual time. It is a, it is a holy uh, a time. And it also reminds us that we are a called out people as uh, Israel and as the, as the body of Yeshua. We are a called out people called to serve the Lord. And so we lift up our cup. Okay, so everybody should have a, a glass in front of them, a, a, a drinking glass, and with grape juice or wine in it, whatever your preference is, and we, we lift up the cup, and on the middle of page four, we sing these words. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen, amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And then we also say this prayer. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shehechianu, v'kiyamanu, v'higianu, lahazman hazeh. And again, it's all transliterated, so you don't have to be a Hebrew reader uh, in order to uh, sing these prayers. And in English, we have, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and has preserved us and has enabled us to reach this season. And we drink from the first cup. Now, you don't have to drink it all down. You can take four sips. Or you can refill your glass. Uh, that, is up, uh, that is up to you. Now that we've had our first cup, our, our introduction to the Passover, and we have begun our Seder by taking the cup of sanctification, the first cup. Now, traditionally, the leader of the Seder washes his hands uh, in a ceremonial way. Oftentimes there is a pitcher, a small pitcher of water and a bowl. And the leader of the Seder will wash one hand uh, and then the other. 
And the purpose of that is to denote uh, purity uh, and also shows that this person is the leader of the Seder. And you know, it is very interesting that in the Brit Chadasha scriptures, in the New Covenant, in the Gospel of John in the 13th chapter, it was at the last Passover Seder of Yeshua that he began that Seder by washing his disciples' feet. And so uh, many have uh, uh, surmised that uh, rather than elevating himself, washing his own hands and elevating himself, uh, Yeshua humbled himself, showing love and compassion by washing his disciples' feet. And because uh, his disciples were, were Jewish men who had celebrated Passover their whole lives, they were surprised that at the Passover Seder, Yeshua would wash their feet. And so it is very interesting that in the Gospel of John, uh, right there in chapter 13 and then chapter 14 and chapter 15 and chapter 16, all that teaching takes place uh, at that last Passover Seder uh, of Yeshua. Well, once the hands are washed, we're ready for our first element of our Seder plate. The first element of our Seder plate we call karpas in Hebrew or greens. Traditionally, we use parsley. We use parsley. Now, parsley uh, serves two purposes in the Seder. One, it, it is a bitter herb, uh, and it reminds us of the slavery. But also, at the beginning of the Seder, it reminds us of our ancestors when they entered Egypt. We may not remember this, but before the, the Jewish people became slaves in Egypt, they dwelt in the land of Goshen uh, and grew to be quite a large company of people. Uh, we know that Jacob and his family went to Egypt, but they grew into a nation of millions. And so eating the parsley reminds us of the growth of our people in the land of Egypt, but it also reminds us that they became slaves in Egypt. And so what we do is we take the parsley and we dip it in salt water, okay? And then in our Haggadah, we have a special prayer. And it goes like this. It's on page five. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri ha'adama. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth. And so you can go ahead now and eat the parsley dipped in the salt water. Now, as we continue the, this part of our Seder, this is where we come to our unity, the unity of three pieces of matzah. We lift up the unity and we take out the middle piece, not the top or the bottom, but we take out the middle piece piece. There it is. And again, you may have on your table three stacked matzahs. You want to take out the middle piece. And we break it. And then we wrap it. We can wrap it in, in a napkin uh, or a special uh, little uh, matzah bag. Uh, and then we put, it, we put it aside for now. At some point during the Seder, before the end of the meal, you're going to want to hide this piece of matzah, this broken piece of the, the, of the middle piece of the stacked three pieces of matzah. You're going to wrap it in a napkin or in a, or in a little linen bag of some sort, and you're going to hide it. Now, I know that sounds... Uh, rather odd, but we'll explain what that means a little bit later in our, uh, in our Passover Seder. But we're going to want to hide this piece of matzah. And now we're going to lift up our unity of matzah, and we have a very special little paragraph that we say uh, in our uh, Haggadah. This is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. All who are needy, let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. Now we are here. Next year may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. 
Next year, may we be free men. And so, as you can see, we are reenacting, we are dramatizing the outgoing of our people from the land of Egypt. We're remembering that our forefathers ate this in the land of Egypt. And it's a call to invite people uh, to come and celebrate the Passover with us, right? Let all who are hungry come and eat. All who are needy, let them come and celebrate Passover with us. And then it says, now we are here. Next year, may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year, may we be free men. Why does it say, now we are here. Next year, may we be in the land of Israel. Why does it say, now we are slaves. Next year, may we be free men. It says that because at Passover, there is a looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. In Judaism, there is a belief that the Messiah will come at Passover. And as a Messianic Jewish community, we know that the Messiah has indeed come. His name is Yeshua, and uh, he was crucified at Passover. He died for our sins at Passover and then subsequently rose from the dead on the Feast of First Fruits. And so that is very interesting because we call this piece of matzah, we call the matzah the bread of affliction. The bread of affliction. And the matzah reminds us uh, of the Messiah uh, and the fact that it is unleavened. Leaven in scripture uh, often denotes sin. And when we look at it very carefully in its modern baking, it's perforated and it has little burn marks and it reminds us that the Messiah was pierced through for our transgressions and by his stripes uh, we are healed. It reminds us of the suffering servant. It reminds us of the Messiah. Sometimes at our Seder, at this point, we might read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, remembering the suffering servant. And isn't it interesting that we have three stacked matzahs and that it is the middle one that reminds us of the suffering servant. Uh, and nobody knows exactly why we have three matzahs uh, at the Passover Seder. Uh, in the Jewish world, there are all kinds of all kinds of speculation about its origin. Maybe it refers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or a variety of, of other threes uh, in the Bible. As a Messianic community, certainly it reminds us of the unity of God, of the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. And uh, we take out that middle piece uh, and we break it, reminding us uh, of the Messiah. Now we begin to retell the story of the Passover Seder. Now in our Haggadah, we have here a particular prayer for the afflicted around the world, uh, written by Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Uh, you uh, can optionally read it, uh, or uh, you can move right to the next part of the Seder. But one thing's for sure, uh, at Passover, we are reminded not only of our own people and our own redemption, but we are reminded uh, that we serve as intercessors for those who are afflicted around the world. Uh, that one of the great values uh, of uh, Judaism is uh, compassion, mercy and compassion. And we remember that we were slaves in Egypt and that God showed great compassion toward us and redeemed us. And therefore, we are to pass that forward and we are to show compassion for others. Now, on page eight of the Haggadah, uh, we have the, what's called the four questions. And the actual retelling of the story begins with the youngest member of the family asking four questions under the heading, why is this night different from all other nights? Manish Tana Halayla Hazeh. And uh, when we sing it, it sounds like this. Manish Tana Halayla Hazeh, Miko Halelot, Shabacho Halelot Anu Ochin, Chametu Matzah, Halayla Hazeh, Kulo Matzah, Shabacho Halelot. Anu ochin sha'ar yirakot halayla hazeh maror. Shebuchon halaylot ein anu matbilin afilu pa'am echad halayla hazeh shtei fa'amim. And the fourth one? 
Shabacho hale lord anu ochin, ben yoshvin u vein misubin, harai la haze, kulanu misubin. In English, under the heading Manish Tana Halai La Hazeh, why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat either leavened bread or matzah. On this night, why do we eat only matzah? The second question, on all other nights, we eat vegetables or herbs of any kind. On this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? On all other nights, we never dip our herbs even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat sitting up or reclining. On this night, why do we eat in a reclining position? Now, throughout the rest of the Seder, we actually answer those questions. And beginning on page 10, we have the beginning of the answers. Now, uh, you can read them, go around your table, and you can read uh, you know, what, is, what is said here. And uh, what is something that is interesting that I will point out is that on the bottom of page 10, uh, you have, it's called the Four Sons. And uh, it is explaining the Passover to a wise son, a contrary son, a simple son, and a son who does not even know how to ask a question. And then in our Haggadah, we have a fifth son, uh, a friend who we've invited to the Seder, uh, a Gentile friend who we, we've invited to the Seder. Uh, there's a fifth, a, a fifth way that we want to explain the Passover Seder. The point of these sons is to remind us that no matter who is at our Seder, we need to be able to explain the outgoing of our people from the land of Egypt in a way that it can be understood. And then we have the story. We have answers to the questions, the story retold. And you can just read right through this. Basically, it is Exodus uh, chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 26, and a variety of other, uh, of other passages. Well, once we have told the story of the outgoing from Egypt, and you can just, by the way, you can just tell it if you want to, or you can have people at your Seder uh, read these passages of, of uh, Scripture uh, that retell the story, the testimony of Israel uh, leaving Egypt. Now, once we retell the story, uh, now we want to remember the ten plagues. And so on page 16, we remember the ten plagues, and we do it in a, in a very interesting way. We have our cup, and we uh, take our finger, and we dip our finger into our cup of wine or grape juice, and then we dab our dinner plate or napkin or whatever is appropriate to dab, and we remember the ten plagues. And we can say them in Hebrew or, or English. We have all ten. Blood, frogs, gnats, flies, cattle disease, boil, hail, locusts, darkness, and of course, the slaying of the firstborn. We say each one to remember the ten plagues. And then once we remember the, uh, the ten plagues, we are now uh, uh, ready to sing a little song. Uh, and of course, you know, when the Jewish people left Egypt, you know, the very first thing the Jewish people did when they crossed uh, through, the, through the waters, the very first thing they did was sing a song. And so we love to sing. So we have a song and it's called Dayenu. It's called Dayenu. And it means it would have been enough. And it's a song of thanksgiving. If God had just taken us out of Egypt but had not parted the waters of the sea, it would have been enough. If he, had not, if he had part of the waters of the sea, but had not give us manna in the wilderness, it would have been enough. And it, 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 there's a, a number of stanzas saying all the marvelous things that, that God has done. Uh, and the chorus goes like this. Dayenu means it would have been sufficient or it would have been enough. And the chorus goes like this. Di, di, I, I always actually have to start with a, with a verse of the song to run into the chorus. So we say, Ilu hotzi hotzi anu hotzi anu mi mitzrayim hotzi anu mi mitzrayim die anu die die anu die die anu die die anu Die anu, die anu, die anu, die die anu, 
Die, die, anu, die, die, anu, die, anu, die, anu. I, and you can read the different choruses, uh, in, or the different stanzas uh, in English. And you know something that uh, I think is very enriching is to make up your own. Uh, you know, uh, if Yeshua uh, had died for our sins uh, and rose from the dead, but had not given us the Ruach today, it would have been enough. But if God had died, if, if Yeshua died for our sins, ro risen from the dead, and given us the Ruach HaKodesh, but uh, had not uh, uh, guided us through this life in a victorious way, it would have been enough. And so there are varieties of ways we can say, God has done this in my life. Uh, but he's done much more, uh, and he's given us an assurance of life uh, forever uh, in, in him. Now we're ready uh, to uh, remember the elements of the Passover that we read about in Exodus chapter 12. We read about a lamb, as it says in Exodus chapter 12, in order at that last meal in Egypt, the Jewish people uh, had lamb, right? And they had unleavened bread and they had bitter herbs. Lamb, unbre unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. And so we have uh, particular paragraphs where we read about the Passover offering, we read about matzah, uh, and then we uh, read about the maror, the, the, uh, the bitter herbs. All right. Uh, and, uh, and then we lift up our cup Uh, and we say a paragraph, a paragraph of praise. It's on the bottom of page 21. It says, therefore, we are bound to thank, praise, laud, glorify, extol, honor, bless, exalt, and reverence him who performed for our fathers and for, all, and for us all these miracles. He brought us from slavery into freedom, from sorrow into joy, from mourning into festivity, and from servitude into redemption. Let us therefore sing a new song in his presence. Hallelujah. And, you know, we sing uh, parts of Psalm 113 and Psalm 114, uh, which are the first parts of the Hallel. It's great songs of praise. We're thanking God for our, uh, our redemption, for our deliverance. And once we, uh, we say those uh, psalms of praise, holding up our cup, we take our uh, cup once again to, to sing uh, the prayer over the cup, and we drink our second cup, called the cup of deliverance. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei prihi hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And we drink our second cup the cup of deliverance, giving thanks uh, for redeeming us out of Egypt. Well, now that we uh, have taken our cup of deliverance and have sung those songs of praise, now we're, re we're ready to eat the foods that remind us really of the bitterness of slavery and of the sweetness of redemption. Now, traditionally, and some families do this and some families don't. We wash our hands. Now earlier, the leader of the Seder washed his hands. Now everyone, we pass around the, the bowl and the pitcher and everyone washes their hands. It's sort of a ceremonial cleansing, we might say. Uh, and now we're ready to eat unleavened bread. We read in Exodus 12, we're commanded to eat matzah at the Seder. Now we fulfill that biblical admonition of eating unleavened bread. You can take parts of the top or bottom of that unity, if you'd like, or, or another piece of matzah. And you hold up a piece of matzah uh, in your hand, and uh, we say the prayers on the bottom of page 25. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Now, that's the traditional uh, prayer over any kind of bread. But now here's the specific prayer over the matzah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, 
Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al achilat matzah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has made us holy in his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of matzah. And now go ahead and eat that piece of matzah. Now we take another piece of matzah. And now we come to another item on our Seder plate, and that is the bitter herbs. And we use horseradish, remember, ground horseradish. And so you, you can pass, pass your Seder plate around, uh, or you might just have uh, little uh, bowls uh, for the uh, horseradish and, and for the other, uh, other elements of, of your Seder plate, whatever it is, just pass that around and you take some matzah and dip it in. And you could use a spoon if you'd like. You can have a spoon in it and you can spoon it out. And uh, the reason I mention that is because I know that that might be a question. So uh, however you get the horseradish on the matzah, that's what you want to do. All right? Uh, and then we say uh, a prayer over the bitter herb. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu al achilat maror. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who made us holy in his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of bitter herbs. And so we go ahead and eat the bitter herbs. And again, as Messiah followers, in the entire Seder, we're remembering not only the redemption of Israel out of Egypt, but our own personal redemption as well. So keep that in mind when we're eating the bitter herbs. It's reminding us where we have been and where God has brought us, the redemption that, that we have. Uh, and now we come to another item on our Seder plate. Now this has a name that we, uh, we may not be familiar with. It's called charosis, charosis, and it's a mixture of apples and walnuts, uh, and some honey, some cinnamon maybe, and some grape juice or wine. Now in your essential Haggadah helper, there is a recipe uh, for that. And so if you're wondering, how do I make that? Here you go. You'll have it right in here. Now, it's, I, now when you think about the ingredients, apples, walnuts, uh, uh, cinnamon, uh, honey, uh, grape juice or wine. It's very sweet, but it's also very pasty. It reminds us of the mortar that was used by our ancestors to make bricks back when they were in Egypt. But we might ask the question, why do we eat something sweet that represents the, the, something as bitter as brick making by our ancestors who were slaves? because we remember that it's out of the bitterness of slavery that we have the sweetness of redemption. So there is a tradition when we eat the, uh, when we eat the, uh, the charosis, is that we take some matzah and we put, the, we put that sweet mixture on there and then we add some more horseradish and we eat the whole thing together. Uh, and again, it reminds us that it's out of the bitterness of slavery that we have the sweetness of redemption. So we're remembering not only the redemption of our ancestors out of Egypt, but also our own personal redemption from the bondage unto sin. Now, on the uh, Seder plate, there's also a roasted egg. Now, you might say, a roasted egg? How do you roast an egg? Well, I think if you just put a, a, an egg in the oven for a little bit, it'll roast. Uh, hopefully, it won't explode. Uh, but either a roasted egg or a hard-boiled egg, and it, it, re it reminds us, of course, it's roasted. It reminds us of the sacrifice. It reminds us of the sacrifice. Why do we use an egg to remind us of the sacrifice? Uh, because uh, of the new life that comes from the sacrifice. Remember that the Passover lamb was sacrificed so the firstborn could live. There was an exchange of life that took place. The lamb died so the firstborn could live. And so the egg reminds us of that. So on your Seder plate, there is the betza, the, the egg. Uh, and again, there are different families have different traditions for some of these things. With some, we cut up a hard-boiled egg 
and everybody takes a little bit of a hard boiled egg, uh, maybe dips it in salt water if you'd like, and, and eats it. Or you just hold up the egg uh, and, and uh, remember it. And then also we have the bone of a lamb uh, on our Seder plate. And we hold up the bone of the lamb and we remember, again, the sacrifice lamb, the, the lamb that was sacrificed uh, for uh, us when we came out of Egypt. And again, on, in our Haggadah, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, quotes from Scripture that you can read to remember all of these parts of the Seder. Okay? Uh, now, we come to the part of the Seder that uh, really, we really look forward to. Because, you know, we've been reading a lot of material and talking during our during our Passover Seder, and time has gone by. Now we're ready for the big dinner, okay? Uh, so now we eat a dinner, uh, the dinner that's been cooking in the oven. Uh, we have recipes. If you'd like to have a traditional ethnic Jewish Passover dinner, we have recipes for you. But just a, a, a nice chicken dinner uh, with vegetables and whatever you like to eat with it, it's okay uh, as well. And you can eat all the matzah that you'd like to eat. It's a bread substitute. You can drink more wine or grape juice uh, and enjoy your meal. Now, you want to remember, though, at the end of the meal, that piece of matzah that we broke earlier in the Seder, that you've put aside, that you've wrapped up, you want to have it hidden by the end of the Seder. So if you're the leader of the Seder or you're uh, someone at the Seder, you know, uh, you might discreetly leave the table for a few moments and hide the piece of matzah somewhere in your home where the children at your Seder can go and search for it. Because at the end of the meal, the children search for the hidden matzah. Now, this piece of matzah has a new name. It's called the afikomen the afikomen, uh, which means uh, that which uh, comes at the end. It can mean a lot of different things, but that which comes at the end really is, is what it means. And uh, this piece of matzah plays a very strategic role uh, in the Passover Seder. This is the substitute for the lamb. Now, we haven't had lamb at our Passover Seder, although I know that some families uh, do have lamb, Traditionally, though, we don't have lamb. We have brisket of beef or we have chicken or something like that. I, uh, but I, this piece of matzah comes to represent the lamb. We have the bone of the lamb on the Seder plate, but we haven't eaten the lamb. So when someone finds the matzah, uh, they come back to the table now, this piece of matzah is so important that we cannot leave the Passover Seder until we have eaten from this piece of matzah because it reminds us of the lamb. And so that means that the young person who has found the matzah uh, has some leverage in negotiating the return of the matzah, right? And so usually uh, the child receives a little gift or uh, of a monetary value or something like that. And there's an exchange that takes place and the leader of the Seder gets the matzah back, right? Uh, now, again, this has great significance. So he unwraps the matzah, you unwrap the matzah and you pass it around the table and everybody breaks off a little piece of this piece of matzah. Now you've been eating matzah all evening, but this piece comes to represent the lamb. And by eating this piece of matzah, we can say that we have fulfilled the biblical admonition of eating matzah at the Seder. We remembered it earlier, but we must eat uh, this piece of matzah to remember the lamb back in Egypt. Now, as Messiah followers, this is really very, very important to us. Remember we said earlier that uh, the three-tiered matzah reminds us of the unity of God. And we broke a piece off of the middle piece, remembering the bread of affliction, remembering the Messiah. And so when we hide this piece of matzah, in a sense, it's in a way remembering the burial of Yeshua and the resurrection 
of the Messiah, right? And when we have this piece of matzah now as Messiah followers, yes, it reminds us of the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. And in a sense, it, it changes from being the bread of affliction to the bread of life and reminds us of the Lamb of God who took away our sins. And so uh, we take this piece of matzah. Everyone has a piece of this middle piece. And again, in our Haggadah, on page 28, we have different verses of Scripture uh, to, to read. But on page 29, we have two prayers. Uh, one is the traditional prayer that we would say over this piece of matzah, remembering the lamb. And then we have a second prayer, uh, remembering uh, Yeshua, the bread of life. And may I suggest that it was after dinner that Yeshua took matzah, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so here, he was making much of the matzah, and in a sense, he was saying, I am indeed the Lamb of God. And so the prayers on page 20, 29, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi, lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then, as Messiah followers, we say, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi, lechem min hashamayim. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brought forth bread from heaven. And then, of course, uh, we eat that piece of matzah, remembering the lamb that died back in Egypt so the firstborn could live, and we remember Messiah, the Lamb of God, uh, who died for our sins. Now we come to the third cup. This cup is called the cup of, uh, the cup of redemption. Uh, and again, it reminds us of the blood of the Lamb. Uh, that died for our sins and who rose uh, from the dead. It reminds us of being redeemed out of Egypt, uh, traditionally. But for us, it reminds us of being redeemed out of Egypt by the blood of the Lamb, the cup of redemption. And so we hold up the cup. And may I suggest that this is the cup that uh, Yeshua lifted up, I, you know, I, when uh, uh, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, uh, which is shed for you. Uh, and so, uh, just as we ha may have Messiah's table from time to time, uh, you know, in our service, uh, it comes from the Passover Seder. It comes from this moment in the Seder. And so, uh, this is really a holy moment as we take the bread and the cup, remembering the body and the blood of the Lamb of God. And we say this prayer. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Uh, and so we drink this cup. We take the afikomen, a piece of that hidden matzah that was found, and we drink this cup, remembering the Lamb of God, the body and the blood of the Lamb of God. Well, now that we have uh, had our third cup, the cup of redemption, we've had the afikomen, the piece of the hidden matzah and the cup, reminding us of uh, the Lamb of God back in Egypt. But as Messiah followers, so importantly, uh, Yeshua, it really is a high point, you know, of, of the Seder. We now come toward the close of the Seder. And of course, we sing a song of praise. Uh, and in our Haggadah, uh, we have a Psalm uh, 136 and a passage from Psalm 118. These great words of praise and thanksgiving for redeeming us, for bringing us out of, out of Egypt and out of the slavery to serve the living God. And isn't that exactly what uh, we're celebrating as Messiah followers? We're celebrating our, our redemption. And so no matter where we're at in life this year, no matter what is going on in our lives, we certainly need to remember 
who we are and whose we are, where we come from and who we belong to. And that is what the story of the Passover uh, is about. And of course, uh, we know that uh, uh, traditionally uh, in Judaism, the Messiah, there's an expectation of the coming of the Messiah at, at Passover, the ultimate redemption right? The ultimate redemption, the completion of the entire story of redemption, right? And so in Judaism, there is a looking forward to the Messiah uh, uh, coming. And so therefore, remember, I said at the beginning that there's an empty place at our table, right? No matter how many people you're having at your Passover Seder, there's an empty place. And that empty place is for Elijah, right? Uh, to come and announce that Messiah is on his way, and so we ask someone from the table to get up and go to the front door of the home and open up the door to see if Elijah is there. Uh, well, of course, the door is open, the door is closed, Elijah is not there, uh, and Elijah's chair remains empty. Uh, now, as Messiah followers, we know that Yochanan the Immerser has come, John the Baptist, Yochanan the Immerser, has come to announce that Messiah uh, was on his way, and we know that the Messiah has come, and his name is Yeshua. But we know that the Messiah will indeed come, uh, come again. He will indeed return and reign from his throne in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. And so we take the fourth cup. Now, traditionally, it's called the cup of hope that maybe by this time next year, Elijah will come. Uh, but as Messiah followers, we take this cup, we call it the cup of the blessed hope that uh, by this time next year, may Messiah be in our midst and may we be sitting at his Passover uh, Seder table, uh, perhaps called the marriage supper of the lamb, you know, and celebrating the redemption with the lamb of God uh, himself. So we lift up our cup and we come to the fourth cup found on page 34. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pri hagafen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has provided our needs, both physical and spiritual, who has provided us with atonement and abundant life in our Messiah, Yeshua. And so then we drink the fourth cup. Now, before we leave the uh, Seder table, uh, there is a little phrase that we want to say. Uh, and there's also an optional song uh, as well that you could, you could say if, if you'd like. Uh, because singing is, uh, is a marvelous uh, part of the Seder. And I would suggest you can sing whatever songs you like. Uh, songs that remind you about the Passover lamb. We have some in our Haggadah, and I'm sure if you uh, look online, you can find these songs and you can hear them uh, on the internet. Uh, but the last thing that we say at our Seder, we say it in Hebrew and in English. In Hebrew, it's Lishana Haba'a Birushalayim. And in English, it's Next Year in Jerusalem. And that takes us to a close of our Passover Seder. So at Passover, we have been reminded of the outgoing of the Jewish people from Egypt, our own personal spiritual redemption uh, in Messiah Yeshua. And I would encourage you during the meal, during that big festive meal, uh, when you make conversation during that time, perhaps one or two people might want to share a testimony of coming to faith uh, in Yeshua, their own Passover story. That certainly makes it very special. Hopefully you'll be able to, you know, eat all of the foods that are on the Seder plate. You'll be able to eat matzah. You have your cup, you have your candles, uh, you have your uh, Haggadah uh, and your essential uh, Haggadah uh, helper. Now, if you're looking for these things, you can go to uh, BethMessiah.org and you can uh, find all of this uh, information or contact us at Beth Messiah Congregation in uh, Columbus, uh, Ohio. And uh, may you have a joyous and festive 
celebration of Passover. Chag Sameach, happy Passover.